In our dress code, improve it. Ask yourself, is this pleasing to my maker? If it is, mashallah, Allah will please you today, tomorrow, the next day. And it's not going to be easy. You know, when Allah says, you do this, you'll get paradise. That thing cannot be such a simple task. It's going to be quite tough. Because what you're getting in return is huge. Very big. You know, Allah kept five salah a day. It is amazing. It is unique. Subhanallah. The fajr that you have is at a time when sometimes, and some of the other prayers, a time when others might say, hey, it's a little bit awkward, you know. Astaghfirullah, it's not awkward. It's Allah. You really want Jannah. You've got to pay a bit. If I offered you, subhanallah, an amount of money for a job, we would do it. Depending on how big the amount is. Allah is offering you something that is bigger than anything you can imagine and you can't even just get up, pray and go back to sleep if you really want. Do that. For Allah, see your family, see your home becoming a happy home because you put Allah at the beginning. You, then, the second part of the narration, the one was develop your relationship with Allah, the other one was your character and conduct because that Allah has created everything else your relationship with all those things watch it develop it that's your jannah just those two things how you are with allah and how you are with everything else that's it your jannah sounds nice and easy isn't it wallahi you've got to work on your heart to start with you've got to cleanse yourself take out the jealousy take out the malice take out the envy take out the love you know everyone loves nice things but when that love for worldly items becomes so high, you want it by hook or crook. And both hooking and crooking are not allowed. Right? It's not allowed. You can't crook. I mean, I want this. What am I going to do? I'm going to pinch it. When we were young, there was a saying, beg, borrow or steal. Do you know what? You can't get to steal. Come on. And begging is not dignified, especially when you are a person who's able Allah's given you capabilities. When you see a person begging and they're normal, big fit. Imagine, have you ever seen a guy like big muscles and from the gym and he's begging? I'd give him a slap. Well, actually I won't. He might slap me back, you know. <laughs> but my brothers and sisters, develop. let's develop ourselves. Many of us are lacking in character. We are Muslims. We are an embarrassment to Islam a lot of the times. We, our dealings are not honest. And then we're looking for happiness. Sometimes the way we talk to people full, full of swear words. I promise you we can eradicate that. We can do without it. It doesn't need to be there. You want a happy home? Use respectful terms. Talk to people with love, with care, with respect in your home. Listen to them. Help them through their problems. Your child might come to you and tell you the most absurd thing on earth. That's your child. That's your amana. You need to help the child. You need to have hope. You need to understand. It's easy for someone else to tell you, excommunicate the child, kick the child out of the home. And wallahi, when it happened to them, they didn't do that. They did the opposite. Why were we foolish to listen to someone else? It's my home. May Allah grant us ease. You, we want happiness. We're, look, we're searching for contentment. I promise you, Islam has come with so much of ease. A lot of the people actually don't follow it. They think they do. That's why we say, don't judge a book by its cover. Sometimes you see people looking, mashallah, tabarakallah. They look like they're extremely pious. Subhanallah. And then Allah tests everyone with different types of tests. When Allah tests you with certain tests, it's on your level. You're going to need to ask yourself, you know what? This is a test from Allah. I need to pass it. It doesn't mean because I look outwardly pious that suddenly I'm going to pass all my tests. Then shaitan attacks your heart by doing what? Messing it. Becoming dirty. You start belittling people. That's why when you see a person who's, who's really close to Allah, one of, the, one of the clearest signs of the closeness to Allah is that your heart is softened. You feel mercy towards others. That's from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is because of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient towards everyone. You're not hard-hearted. You're not harsh. That's a sign of the mercy of Allah. When you are really close to Allah, you become a soft person. In, in, in the sense that 
you care for others. You have mercy. You look at others as, mashallah, good people. You try and look for the good in them. Help them up on their feet. When you notice something bad, you care for them. You speak to them in a nice way. You really want them to correct that. But when you see yourself beginning to fulfill salah, beginning to become a practicing Muslim, if your heart begins to dislike all other people, shaitan has gotten a stronger grip of you than he had prior to you having thought that you were practicing. You were practicing. You follow what I'm saying? It happens to a lot of young brothers and sisters. We start practicing after 20 years of misguidance, 40 years, 50 years of misguidance. We start practicing. And that very moment we start practicing, we look at our own bodies as people who are total goners. But you were a goner just yesterday. You see? Where is the mercy? If it took you 50 years to move, it might take them 60. It might take them 70. You want them to move in five minutes. Brother, come here or you're astray. It's over. Take it easy. Talk to them nicely. If a man turns to Allah or a woman upon his or her deathbed, it's not too late for as long as the gargara hasn't come to them. Just prior to their, their death, they made the tawbah and they said, the Prophet ﷺ told his uncle on his deathbed, Qul kalimatan uhajju laka biha al qiyamah. Oh my uncle, just say this shahada and I'll, I'll, I'll fight your case on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. That was near the end. So even if someone spent their entire life in a specific way, it doesn't mean they ended that way. England was playing New Zealand the other day. Was it New Zealand? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was South Africa. At the beginning, who was winning? England was winning. They were excited. Everyone was, yay, home, coming home. <laughs> Subhanallah. What happened? The beginning of the match means nothing. You could have started your life in any way. How bad you were at the beginning means nothing. When the whistle was blown, what was the score? Sorry, I know it's embarrassing. It's okay. You don't need to say it, right? But what I mean is, in your life it's the same. You can be as terrible as you were for 50 years, 50 minutes in other words, right? Of the match. Last few minutes you started one try, two tries, three tries, a good kick here, another good kick there. And what happened? Woo, we won. We picked up the cup. The same thing happens in our lives. You started off maybe in a bad way. Don't lose hope. Keep on working. Keep on trying. You know, I was watching. I won't take the names of these countries because some of them, subhanAllah, they might be offended. But there was a team losing 50-0. Right? You think it's a joke? It's not. And I was... Surprised to see how enthusiastically they were playing as though they were going to make a change. Subhanallah, they should have just told the guys, we're sitting here, just make it more, break a record, 100-0, it's okay. But they were so enthusiastic, they were playing like they couldn't believe it. Subhanallah. That's motivation for me, man. Subhanallah, no matter what, no matter how bad you're doing, just keep going. One day, inshallah, who knows, you hit the jackpot. May Allah grant us ease. You win the match. That's what life is. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You're a good person, don't you think? Who thinks that they're really so evil and not worth even living? If anyone's made you think that way, Allah tells you that's wrong. We are the ones who gave you life. Use that life to come close to us. Because ultimately, the whistle shall be blown. You're going to come back to us anyway. When you come back, you did your best. You know, Allah's mercy is such... That when we get back to Allah and He sees us, questions us, for as long as we worshipped Him alone, for as long as we tried our best, Allah says, I may wipe out through my mercy whatever you have done in your life and still give you paradise without reckoning if I wish so. That's Allah. Why lose hope in the mercy of Allah? My brothers and sisters, that happy home will not be a happy family if it's void of prayer, if it's void of salah, if it is void of obedience to Allah. Try your best. Speak with respect. Spend time in the home. Sit with your family members. Talk to them. Help them. Empower them. Say good words to them. And that's the way we will be improving. Become a role model in your own home. Help the people. Ask yourself what they want to achieve. Is it okay in the eyes of Allah? Yes. 
Let it happen. I will stand. I'm the man of the house. Subhanallah. You know what? Those of us who have children, it's a big responsibility to get them married. Wallahi. One of the biggest downfalls in the house. People are saying, you know, I've got children. They were so good. They were all lovely. Mashallah, my daughter, my son, etc. What a lovely person. They grew old. They became such. Now the guy is 25 years old. He hasn't ever, ever done anything wrong within the home. But you know what? He wants to marry someone totally out of our culture, our caste. So that's the first thing they're doing wrong in your life. Meet the person. Who do they want to marry? Meet them. Talk to them. See them. Give them time of the day. Respectfully. They may just be the parent through whom you will become a grandfather or mother. Do you understand? Meet them. Talk to them. Don't think like, subhanallah, the world has not progressed. It has. It's moved in leaps and bounds. The globe has changed and it is changing every minute. If you're not going to live up to it, you're going to have a very, very sad life. Within the confines of what Allah has taught, you will progress. You need to change your thinking. You need to understand there's diversity on earth. Some of our best friends don't belong to our culture or race. And they are very close friends to ask. Ask yourself, will you allow your child to marry the child of this person? If the two of them really want to marry, some people say, no way. No way. Not over my dead body. <laughs> well, then I will say, well, then over your alive body. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, that's what it is. You have to learn. You have to understand. We are suffering. I have been facing these cases for many years and I don't know what to do about it anymore. I have people who are friends of mine. They don't see the light. And I say, my brother, do you know what? Learn to think, man. Learn to think the world has changed. Everything has happened. Perhaps this person will be the best for you. You're living in an environment that is cosmopolitan. The whole dunya is here. How can you be so narrow-minded? That's why there's no happiness in your home. And some people will swear, no, they can do it after I die. But for what? I want to tell you something else. You know, I've seen people who don't mind their kids not being married. But you're not going to marry who you want. Subhanallah. Like I said, bring your parents into your confidence. They are important people in your lives. Talk to them from the very beginning. Don't do everything and then come and try and halalize things at the end of the day. You know?